Okay, I've added one more functionality to the enemy one trigger function. And before I had it destroying the other game object, which was the colliding bullet. And now I also have it destroying the enemy object itself. So when it says game object, that means whatever object the script is attached to. And the enemy one script is attached to the enemy object. I've added a new JavaScript called Wave, and this is going to control all of the enemy creation and timing. First of all, I have declared an enemy one game object, which is going to grab that enemy one prefab. I have a timer called Next Wave, which I initialize in the start function at two seconds. And later on in the update, you can see down here that it adds five seconds. So we can change those numbers depending on how many enemies come out and the user experience, the player's experience. How the update function works right now is it compares the time that the game has been running, which is time.time, .time, to next wave. So if it's been past that initial two seconds or every five seconds after that, it's going to go into this if statement. Now I have a path variable declared here, and right now it always equals 1, and I'll show you what that 1 means in a minute, and I'll be able to add on many more paths really easily here. So what this does is after it selects the path, it goes into a for loop, and we can create as many enemies as I want, and right now it's going to create 5, and with each time through this for loop, it's going to call inst enemy, which requires two parameters. The first parameter, um, right now it's going to be x for this function, but it could be y if it's a, um, a different kind of a function that comes down the screen, for example, and then it sends in the path. So this is going to be the behavior during the lifetime of the, uh, the enemy or the group that is created together. And then this x is negative 12 minus 2 more for each time a new enemy is created. So for a group of 5, that's going to spread them out um, to the left so that none of them appear on the screen at the beginning. So when inst enemy is called, it receives two parameters, the start position as a float and the path as an integer. So for me to instantiate an um, a prefab, which is on this line here, I need to know where in game coordinates in X, Y, and Z to create that. So I have to initialize that first. I have declared a variable um, pose for position. It's just a vector 3. And depending on the path that comes in for case 1, I already know that I want that to be an X squared function. So the x is the start position that I sent in, and the y, which is a function of x, I use the math f dot pow to square the x value. And that's all that this switch statement does. So that sets the x and y coordinates of my vector 3, and I know that all my z's are always going to be 0, so I force that to be 0 here. And I believe that that initializes a 0, but just to make sure if anything ever changes, I want to make sure that it stays zero or else my bullets won't be able to hit it. And then I create the variable clone and I set equal to instantiate this enemy one, which I have attached um, in the inspector at the vector three position here, POS, and the rotation quaternion.identity. Now, here is a way that I can access the variables from another script attached to another object. And I've just declared clone. So after this whole function goes through this inst enemy, when it ends, I'm no longer going to have access to the same clone guy. So I need to make sure that I do something with it while I'm still in this function. So I declare another variable called other, and this is how I gain access to the enemy one script, this guy up here, on the clone. 
which is an enemy. So enemy one is the name of the script. Set equal to, well, this is the type here, clone.getComponent enemy one. This is the format for gaining access to another script and other variables. So now anytime I use the variable other, it's the same as clone.getComponent enemy one. Now in enemy one, I already have a path variable and I have ABCD x3, x2, and x1. So I'm going to send all of these variables in there. Now later on when I add in other functions, um, I don't have to declare all of these. I'll only need to use the ones that I'm going to send. So I'll have to plan ahead for those and um, not have to define ones that I'm not going to use because I don't need to. So on this line here, the enemy has been created and then I start declaring um, or initializing its variables. So when we come into here, we can see that I have declared a, b, c, d, x, 3, 2, and 1, and a path, and those uh, are, are now going to be created or uh, initialized by the other script, so I don't need to do them in the start function, but I do want to initialize the x speed. I could potentially do this from the other, the wave controller also, but I don't have that right now. And then every update function, every frame, it's going to come in and look for what path this object is set to. So if I have a group of five, they will all follow each other. And uh, the x is going to be updated. Um, it's going to add x speed times the time since the last frame. So that's time, not delta time. And the y is going to be um, a function of x squared. So this one here looks a little bit different than it did on my other script, so I need to make this more efficient and have both of them be somewhere else so that they always call the same spot. Uh, if I ever need to change the function in one place and I forget to change it in the other, then that's not good. So it won't actually matter right now because these form off the screen and it will um, not be a big deal, but I, I do want them to be in the same place. And that's what we have. So let's go into Unity and I'll show you how on the main camera I have the wave script down here and I have um, dropped the enemy one prefab into this position here uh, for the instantiated object. So when I play now, we'll see the stars start to fall. Here they come. Now after two seconds, I have some enemies forming, five of them, and they've followed this um, x squared parabola. And they're going to keep on doing this forever. So there's not much excitement there. So it will be exciting when I um, have some randomness to the ABCD variables and um, so from here on, I can either add hit points to the game or I can add new enemy types. But there we go.